Clueless Kamala Harris was uh, captured on video last week clapping along to a protest song during her <laughs> recent visit to San Juan, Puerto Rico, only to be informed by her aide that the group was actually protesting her. This is hilarious. Let's check it out. how excited she was when she first started <laughs> clapping along and then the gradual slowing down of the clapping and the look on her face when she finally figured out what was going on. What an absolute embarrassment, Eric. Your thoughts on this? Yeah, well, you know, I haven't seen that kind of enthusiastic clapping since I've seen a trained seal. That was, uh, <laughs> that was very good. How much of a fool do you have to be to make Joe Biden look good? We know why she was picked as a running mate. I'm sorry. Uh, clapping along and being and looking happy uh, while people are singing about you, you know, and singing about freeing Palestine. And they greeted her with banners that called her like the queen of genocide or something like that. She clearly didn't receive a warm welcome. She was in Puerto Rico to talk about how much money the U.S. has given Puerto Rico as a territory under the Biden administration. I think she said like $140 billion or something like that. Whatever it takes, you know, to buy some votes before the election. <laughs> mention, right? mention the money we've given you. They still didn't give her a warm reception. And she sat there and clapped along to a song that was insulting to her. Um, yeah, not a good look, but I mean, this is Kamala Harris. I'm sure she just got a good cackle about it later. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure she did. And you know, who honestly have we have we not given money to at this point? I mean, it is just it's just all around so embarrassing. Continuing on uh, with the embarrassing women, Eric, uh, the slob kebabs on The View recently went all out on a tirade regarding their thoughts on whether or not we need men. Let's take a listen to what Anna Navarro had to say on the matter. Roll the clip. Men are useless. <laughs> I mean, love it. And by the way, I want I to differentiate between straight men and gay men, because I think I, I would die without gay men. Nobody can gossip like gay men. Nobody can help you accessorize like gay men. Nobody can help you uh, from, keep you from doing harm to, your, to yourself uh, like gay men. But with the exception of somebody like Steve, I think Steve is very self-sufficient. That's Joy's husband. But like, is. my is. husband... It takes a village of women to make sure that he's not emaciated, starving, and living in his own filth. Eric, I've got to say I'm absolutely <laughs> shocked that any man would marry any one of these women. Uh, these poor guys. I mean, to have your wife publicly shame you and show zero respect for you on national television, it's, it's pretty low. What do you make but of that But not gay men. She, she, you know, her husband she can insult, but not gay men. Right. Gay men. David, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and the whole cast, the view, you only showed a clip of the segment. They just basically went around and, and trashed their husbands for yeah. the most part. Yeah. Um, I don't know how the husbands feel about this. You would imagine they'd be all divorced after the segment, but maybe they got home and gazed into their husband's eyes longingly and froze them into stone like Medusa so they couldn't leave. Um <laughs> <laughs> that might actually happen with the host of the view. I Possibly. I want to know, you know, who who would want to be with the view? Uh, that's that's the question. That um, is the question of the what year. What man really wants to be, you know, uh, seen associating with the view? Um, <laughs> I, I don't know, uh, but yeah, that was really weird. I, I don't understand going on national TV and uh, you know insulting and, and degrading the person that you're married to, but. No. This is the view. You know, I guess anything goes on that program. You're right. I guess anything goes. Maybe they're married to uh, trans men because I cannot imagine. I just can't imagine any man wanting to be with one of them. You know, if men talk about women the way they're talking about men, they'd be called misogynist. Uh, but, you know, they probably just hate men because no real man would really ever probably give them the time of day if they were just out on the street walking along. It is just disgusting, <laughs> despicable behavior. I, nothing ceases to amaze me from these, these slob kebabs on The View, Eric. One of the real men who real Americans love, of course, is President Donald Trump. And he is being attacked yet again by the lamestream media. But hey, what else is new, right? Let's take a listen to MSNBC cut Trump off as he discussed election interference after stepping out of the courthouse in relation to the hush money case against him. Roll the clip.
This is a pure case of voter intimidation and election interference, and it shouldn't be allowed to happen. This case could have been brought by the DA, but they And we're going to... Former president is repeating what he has said often, that this is a case of election interference, which is arguably not the fact. Mara Eliasson, let's, let's you jump in here as well. There's talking about the way that he yeah. has been successfully spinning a yes. lot of this. Spinning and delaying. So, so their tactics and their strategy. The tactic is to delay as long as possible, hopefully past the election. That's the strategy is to destroy Americans' faith in the justice system so that whatever result of these trials, Donald Trump can dismiss them or say that they're phony, just like he tried to do with the. Don't these women get tired of this? It's just the same story with them every time, isn't it? <laughs> oh, oh and this is, you know, MSNBC, we can't have the guy who's running for president of the Republican Party. We can't allow him to speak ever because we have so much integrity. And that's why we won't hire McDaniel um, and we won't have our on our shows because we have so much integrity and we don't gaslight <laughs> and we don't do things like that. Uh, so here they are and, and they cut away and it's definitely not election interference. That's definitely not the fact. Uh, actually, that's arguably the fact um, <laughs> that it is election interference. And of course, the, the piece goes on, that clip goes on. Eventually, Andrea Mitchell claims that it's Donald Trump's fault that the, you know, the court process and the hearing is going on now and that uh, you know, the DA didn't bring it up until 2023. That's Trump's fault that it's interfering with the election, not, not DA Alvin Bragg. Um, so, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. Everything's blamed on Trump. It's his fault. And of course it's not election interference to, you know, sideline a guy who's campaigning for president of one of the two major parties in the United States and not let him be on the campaign trail to hold a hearing and wait until now to uh, set things up. They don't see that as campaign interference <laughs> at all or election interference. It is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I think America is fed up. Trump supporters are fed up with the lamestream media, and they're fed up with disgraced women like Kathy Griffin. Uh, we have some really good news on this front. She recently visited Long Island for a comedy show she was doing, and let's take a look at uh, what was there to greet her before the show opened. protesting this, this woman here. Yeah, yeah. We got a head of hers like she had a head of Trump. <laughs> you tell me why we're here. Because we're Americans and she's not. This just warms my heart. I love to see it. We need more of this, don't we, Eric? <laughs> hey, you know what? I think the show outside the venue was more entertaining than what <laughs> went on inside, uh, so. especially when it deals with Kathy Griffin, who, you know, wasn't she just on social media making videos pleading for people to come to her shows because <laughs> ticket sales were so bad. And if you support comedy and support women, you got to go and buy a ticket to <laughs> Kathy Griffin, who's only relevance on social media is people questioning her facial surgery. I know. It's uh, terrifying. And, and how odd that has come out. And of course, you know, you always go back to that great line about Kathy Griffin. She's a lot like the AIDS quilt. A lot of work and stitching has gone into it, but it's sad to look at. <laughs> Very sad indeed, and I think I'm going to have nightmares about it now tonight, Eric.